Let's get to another critical issue of key importance. Now we 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 know that on the first of this month, October, the you know Minister of of Health, Madam um, uh, Sylvia Masaba, did uh, you know lift restrictions on some of the uh, you know uh, some of the measures that were taken to to to, to combat uh, COVID-19. As the opposition, do you think it was appropriate for uh, for government to you know lift the restrictions that we had on, on COVID-19? I think it's one of the best things they've done, actually. For that one, I highly commend them, and I'm very appreciative, you know. And uh, for a person who is in the opposition, I, I do have my own invitations to go out there myself, outside the country, and uh, speak in, few, in a few places. And I couldn't even make concrete plans because of the COVID situation. So with this, I am very happy. You know, maybe when we leave the country and we talk at certain fora, people realize to say what we talk about here is very relevant out there. Because some people read our posts. And they invite us internationally to go and speak out there. You get the point. And in Zambia, when you speak to them, it's, um, it's about insults and it's about um, uh, enmity and stuff like that. But the things that we say right here, right here are very, very relevant. And uh, trust me, I think I'm one of uh, the happiest, you know. Mm. I'm one of the happiest when I saw that because uh, the issue of traveling became uh, very, very uh, difficult. And uh, even when you, you traveled, you'd be considered a certain way because you're coming from this red state and you have to go there and be quarantined, uh, quarantined and everything. So nobody can invite you from Zambia. But with this now, I think Zambians are able to travel, have various programs out there, and most importantly, also the issue of tourism. Because mm. we are supposed to make money from our, from our tourism. So with that, it was very hard for uh, tourists to get into the country. So mm. I think it's really good. If, 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 we're really, if we're really going to win the fight against COVID-19, we needed by all means to ensure that we put in all these restrictions, uh, maybe get everyone vaccinated. Mm -hmm. That's when you open up the the country like they did. Don't you think this then contradicts mm -hmm. what other schools of thought you know, are arguing, that you would have left things be the way they were? Up mm -hmm. until everybody, maybe seventy percent, you know, of the population is vaccinated before opening up. No, not really. I, I, I don't. Um, I, I don't agree with that myself. And, and if you look at how many people have been vaccinated so far, the entire population is it three percent that they talked mm. about last time. The population is so small. And look at the time we started vaccinating up to now. So if you're going to wait another um, three months or whatever to get maybe seventy. You won't even manage to get 70% of the population. Yeah. You know, we won't manage to do that. And mm -hmm. the whole time, we'll be losing out in terms of Zambians traveling and then uh, uh, tourists also coming in. And there are many Zambians, by the way, that rely on uh, uh, trade, you know, businesses out there. So all that is just affecting us. This is October in Zambia. And we know COVID and the heat, they don't even agree with each other to begin with. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, so it was, uh, the really government... informed decision. It was an informed decision, mm -hmm. yes. And and you, you saw even the other time, uh, I think there was a day where there were even no cases of COVID uh, uh, reported. So uh, the, the other time, then it, it was three. I've not checked the past few days. But if you look at the way the cases are being reported and what the government has done, I think it's in line with that. Mm. Because uh, just because other countries are vaccinating the whole population and... Uh, um, and, and, and doing whatever it is they are doing. We don't have to follow everything. You know, we always have to have our homegrown uh, solutions according yeah. to our own situation. Yes. Mm. Right now, we are lucky to have this October heat and let's uh, use it to the advantage in terms of uh, this uh, COVID mm. situation. To, to, talk, to top that, the president did appoint uh, his COVID advisor. Mm. As a opposition, is this a welcome move? To appoint Definitely a COVID not. Advisor? Definitely not. I, I wonder what that person is for, you know. Advi COVID advisor. So what is the entire Ministry of Health uh, uh, all about? The doctors there, the, the PSs, the directors, what are they doing? Are they telling us they can't advise us in terms of COVID? So the COVID advisor was a very, very irrelevant post. And for us, I think it was just a way of them just employing whoever it is that they want to, uh, to employ. You know? Let's speak to uh, Morris from Sinazongo. Morris, good evening. Uh, good evening, Andrew. Well, uh, I'm and with President uh, uh, Sawa Imboela. Mm. Madam Imboela. Good evening, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Um, well, uh, I just wanted to uh, say I'm actually uh, impressed with the way you come out. I've, I've watched you a, a number of times, I think, you know, giving interviews. You, you really come out differently compared to the way you come out on your uh, page, Facebook page, for example. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm saying this uh, uh, because you, uh, you, you, uh, you, you're just from you know, complaining about the cadres mm -hmm. to say UPND has only managed to control cadres probably from the markets, the stations, but they have not done so online. Mm -hmm. um, I think just like another caller mentioned, it's basically 
what what do you write? I, I can cite uh, uh, just a recent example. This afternoon, you, you posted <laughs> something about the good thing of having voted PF out. Mm -hmm. uh, just to paraphrase, as actually resulted in more broke UPN cutters. In fact, you called it the the the, 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 the brokest of the brokers. <laughs> so you can imagine what, what 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 reaction do you really uh, expect from you know the UPN if you are to make such a post? Uh -huh. as, as, as a leader. So, uh -huh. in as much as you don't want to agree that maybe what you post does not, you know, anger people, but I would really urge you to say, okay, uh -huh. uh, if you are to critique, uh -huh. okay, quite all right, say, okay, the European government, you're not doing fine in this, and probably provide the sol solutions. I think that's what the checks and balances are. It's not really about opposing or maybe, you know, trying to get back at others. And also, maybe lastly, uh, very quickly, on, on, on media, I, I, I really don't agree when you say for you really nothing has changed because I think we were seeing what was happening. And maybe probably at that time, it's because, yes, you were in the opposition, but maybe you were more aligned to the former ruling party. I thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Morris. Well, um, <coughs> Mr. Morris has <laughs> wants to find out. He, 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 he thinks that there are two different mm -hmm. Savoy Imboilers, one mm -hmm. that is online and one that he's watching now. Yeah. Do you deliberately, you know, when you're writing on, 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 your, you know, on your different social media platforms, do you mm -hmm. do it to, to pinch the UPND? Do you do it mm -hmm. for fun? What exactly? <laughs> Maybe okay. I understand it from there. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, okay, there are times, yes, I do that, you know. I think I told you earlier on that they, most of the UPNG people are my mbuyas, so sometimes I have a way of just getting to them, you know. But like I said, it's, it's not those posts where they go um, violent or whatever. It's not posts like that. They go violent on on uh, on, on what? On uh, a policy issue posts, you know. Because there'll be times where I really post something to say, to UPND, you know. Why is it to my Talibans? You know, sometimes I call them Talibans because of how angry you know they are and then sometimes i'll ask them to say you used to be a uh, bitter in the opposition and you'd say you are bitter because things are bad and everything but now you're from government so why are you still bitter you know so mm -hmm. i'll tell them things like that yeah so even now you know um i, I am worried that uh uh they, they they are still so violent and so much on social media they're not going on the ground you know yeah. they've been complaining to say um the the, the leader hh is appointing big people you know, and I remember, I think I wrote a post like that to say, you're complaining that he's appointing big people. You're on social media. How are they going to find you? <laughs> go, out, <laughs> go out there, join mm -hmm. the UPND and be recognized. You, you get a point. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's funny, Andrew, when I went um, to UNSA to do my, my PhD, my research question was about how in the various struggles, be it uh, from uh, colonialism to now, be it in the Arab Spring, almost all uh, the independence of various countries, at the front of the liberation struggles are always women and the youth. But when it comes to political jobs, it's always the big men. It's like that. <laughs> I had to get a whole PhD question to go study that. But sadly, I've been so busy with politics, I'm not even at school at the moment. You know, So that is how bad it is. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, 56, 58 years after independence. And the Zambians, the youth, have to assert themselves. You know, It's the reason why you have seen us as women coming out. Because it has always been like that. Mm. The women and the youth are sidelined after the struggles, but they are always the ones in the forefront all the time. Even during independence, you see that most of these people were arrested. The women were the ones who were in their homes cooking and everything, even uh, um, mobilizing the political parties. It's, a, it's the women that were stripping. People like Julia H. Monica, they're the ones who are stripping, you know, ensuring that uh, uh, the, the, the previous regimes, the, the white regimes, um, uh, did what they wanted, you know. And, yeah. and you know, uh, for Africans, for us, you know, in terms of our culture, women show breasts and it's not a big thing. Mm. But for white people, when they see women, they are protesting and they're half naked. It was very, very, uh, it was a, it was a very weird sight. And yeah. they, they had to do the demands that the women wanted. Mm. But when they won the struggle, the men remembered, oh, Julia Chika Monica, you're not educated. This one, you're not educated. But if you look at the list even of the people that were being appointed, they were not educated. Because at independence, Zambia only had 100 graduates. You know, So from 100 graduates, it meant that a lot of other people, you know, both mm -hmm. men and women, were not educated. Yeah. But they needed to have the posts. Even now, we can see it with the UPND right now as a, as a form of government. Yeah. The youth and the women are sidelined. 
So if the youth are going to continue being online, mm. insulting politicians, the men will continue being appointed. <laughs> <laughs> People are being taken from retirement right now by President HH, and they're being appointed. Yeah. All the youth are still online. So let them get out of, from there, from the online space and go and, and, uh, get, yes, and get their jobs. To watch longer interviews such as this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Diamond TV Zambia.